I've come down to Willow Lake on the Lynch Hill Complex. I've got two nights on here. It's one of my favourite lakes. It's an absolutely fantastic lake to fish. It's got everything you want. I can fish in the margins, I can fish out in the middle, um, I can fish on the deep water, I can fish on the shallow water. With a bit of luck, over the next two days, I'll be able to show you one or two fish from this lake, which are cracking fish. They're really dark, typical Oxfordshire carp. Uh, I'll be showing you the methods that I use down here to fish these type of gravel pits, the baits that I use, and uh, hopefully we see a nice fish on the bank. I'll bring you up to speed with what's been going on so far. Uh, when I got down here early this morning, or earlier today, I did see a couple of fish out in this area. Um, where it's a zone that I've fished in the past and I've had some good fish out of this swim, I know my spots. I'm fishing at probably 45, 50 yards out, so it's not too far. So what I've done is, I straight away, I put a dozen large spawns out there onto the spot. Um, it was only two weeks ago that I caught off of this spot, so I know that it's, it's you know, there's been a bit of bait going on this area, so I feel really confident. Um, within an hour of me putting the bait in, I was sitting here and I started seeing a little bit of fizz coming up right over the baited area, which gave me a bit of confidence. And then I see a head come out, like it's a decent sized fish. I reckon it, it you know, it's a big 20. It come out, it stuck his head out and went down. Bit more fizz coming up over me. I've had a few liners on the left hand rod. So it, it's looking really good. Also as well, every now and then, I kept seeing like the odd fish just come up out of deep water, uh, put his back out and just sort of cruise off. Uh, and about 10 or 15 minutes ago, I walked up a little bit further up the bank to see if there's anything in the trees there, in the margins, and there's a willow hanging off the island in front of me, and there's a real shallow ledge on the edge of the island, and the sun was beaming on it, and you could really see the, the water visibility in here is really good at the moment, and you could see the bottom out there, and I could see sort of four or five decent sized carp milling around on that shallow water which isn't too far from where I'm fishing. It's probably only sort of 20 yards away from where I'm fishing, where my spot is. So with a bit of luck, them fish have been coming on and off of my spot. And last time I was here, I had three takes in a night out of this swim. And they all come sort of during the darkness hours. So hopefully tonight we'll get some action. But otherwise, I've got 48 hours. So there's plenty of time to get a fish. So I walk down the bank, uh, sun's really blaring into this corner and I found about, well, there's about a dozen fish I'd say, just under the surface. So I'm just going to put a free line, free line mixer out there with just a little PVA bag to add a bit of weight to it and just give it half hour and see. It's a little bit enclosed here, there's a big willow tree sort of hanging over the top. So. I'm either going to have to underarm it out or I might just wade out a little bit and just flick it out there. Um, just now I just see one come up and sort of take a feather off the surface so they're definitely keen. So we'll see how we go. Get a, take me shoes and socks off and wade out. I always end up in the lake. Wherever, wherever I do and wherever I, wherever I go, I always end up in the water somehow or other. There's a big group of them a bit further along. Might be worth firing a few out, eh? Look at all this lot here, look at them. The first one's a decent fish as well. See the one with a white towel? I ain't caught him yet. I always see him when I'm here. It's 
steaming around, didn't they? I reckon just the patch will probably do it. Just that sound they liked, didn't they? We've had a little go just putting out a free line, just a single, and they're just swimming straight under it. So I'm gonna head back to my tackle, get a couple of patch rules and mixers and just fire them in really close. And uh, then I can just keep an eye on them. And if they do start taking them, then I can just flick this free line right in amongst them. A good thing about free line is um, it doesn't spook them as much because they just feel as if it's a free bait coming into them, you know. So like when you use a controller, they hear the controller, they see the controller, but a free line you can just literally sometimes flick it right next to them and they come straight up and take it. So it's one of my favourite methods of catching carp off the surface. And these uh, dog biscuits I'm using, I've meshed so they stay on. I've glued them as well and I put a little bit of cork on the back of them just to make sure they stay up. And I can pretty much flick this uh, sort of 20 or 20 odd yards, which is enough to get in amongst the fish. A lot of these fish are coming in a lot shorter than that. So I can definitely reach a range. I'm just gonna need to put a few baits out just to see if I can get them taken and uh, have a little go. Look at them over there. Unbelievable. Normally they're not scared of the ducks, it's the gulls they don't like in here. Yeah. The, the, the ducks, they'll take them amongst them, but as soon as them gulls come in, they, go, they don't like it. Is that one? Yeah. There's a couple of fish taking now. We've put a few mixers out and a couple of taking. So I'm going to flick a little free line out there and uh, just see how we go. Hopefully there's a few more fish to join them. I've got bird's nest now. That's about typical, isn't it? Fish come along and uh, I'm a bit busy. It's absolute shit. It's got to be the worst line I've ever used this. He's pretty keen, this one, isn't he? When they swim around fast like that, they're, they're on the munch, aren't they? You can catch them ones normally. Uh, I wouldn't, I'd wait a bit. Let's get this line done. He's catchable, that one. It's getting a bit late in the day now. I had a little go on the top earlier, with just a little free line. I had one fish taking the odd floater. It looked pretty good. And then a few ducks come along and they sort of fish scooted off. Uh, so now I'm just settled down for the night. Hopefully um, in the middle of the night, the fish get out here, which I, I expect them to. At the moment, they all seem to be up the other end, but I'm expecting as it gets dark, they start drifting back up here, which they generally do. 
and with a bit of luck we'll get a few fish. It is busy on here tonight, there's quite a few anglers on, so which is what I'm not used to on here. The, the other times that I've fished on this lake it's been fairly quiet, so whether the pressure uh, slows them down or not, we'll soon find out, but I still feel confident tonight one of these rods are going to go. They've baited nicely, uh, you know, there was fish on it earlier, there's obviously still bait out there, they wouldn't have got through it because um, they all did come on the top at about one o'clock, two o'clock to fish. So we just see how tonight goes and hopefully in the morning we'll have a nice fish ready for the cameras. So it was quiet in the night. I expected to have some action, but nothing. And then just before first light, I started getting the odd liner and then within 20 minutes it ripped off. I had a good battle with the fish. It weeded me up a couple of times and I soon got him in the net and an absolute stunning mid-20 common. So it's a brilliant start to the trip. Hopefully get a couple more during the rest of the session. When I was down here the other week, I was putting a bit of bait on this spot and um, kept coming around and checking it, but it seemed to be more of a tench area. Um, I, every time I come down here, the bait had all gone. So what I've done is I baited it and I sat and wait and see what was coming in and having the bait and there was about eight or nine tench in there eating it. I did see the odd carp in this area, but they never seemed to go right over the spot. They sort of stayed around the edge of it. And, um, but the tench was right in on it straight away. So I do feel as if when you put bait down in this bit, um, it's a bit of a tench swim. So I will put a bit of bait here just to check it, just to see if a few carp do come in because it's a bit cooler now. Um, now we're in the middle of September, so it's a lot cooler. And uh, hopefully, you know, there's, we see the odd carp along these margins today, feeding. It's looking good for it. The sun's getting high now, so it won't be long and these fish will start getting in close. I walked around the lake this morning, baiting up several spots in close. Uh, see a nice common in, in the corner over there. It's li literally feeding in about a foot of water. I sort of hung about for a little bit. I was just about to go and get a rod and it just sort of moved off into the snags. And then I come around to another spot I baited. I put about three scoopfuls of mix of boilie and pellet and hemp a couple of tiger nuts on that this morning. And when I got into the area where, where I baited, it clouded right over. So it was really clear this morning when I had a look in there and then there was this big cloudy sort of mud patch there. And I was uh, looking at it thinking, my God, I'm sure that's changed. And then amongst it, I see a towel. So there's fish feeding in that area. So I've gone round, packed my gear up, uh, they're feeding on the bait, gone round, packed the gear up, moved it round to a different swim right at the top end of the lake. And what I'm, my plan to do is, is I'm going to go round with a pole, use a pole, a baiting pole, and I'm going to take it out into the lake, so put a few sections on it, and then I'm going to cast over it, and then I'll drag it back through. Um, I'll put some bait in it, I'll put my rig in it, and then I'm just going to lower it down on the end of the bush, because I don't really want to lead it right in amongst them. Uh, put a few more baits in there, hopefully I'll get a take. I've caught fish off this spot before, doing the same Method, I had a, a cracking 37 mirror last year doing this from this area, from the same spot, doing this, using the pole, casting across it. So hopefully um, we'll be able to get some fish. So it's looking really good in there. Um, I've got a chance of maybe more than one fish. I'm going to fish here all day. I'm going to put a rod in there and lock it up because uh, it's tight to a bush. And if everything, you know, if I do get fish and there's still fish in the area, I'll probably even do the night in here. I've seen a fish show uh, about 20 minutes ago, just as I moved my gear down here, just to the right, like literally three or four rod lengths out. So that'll probably be my other rod. So yeah, it's looking good for today. Ready? You might have to feed that through. You can take a couple of sections off if you want. I'm going 
going to need Joe to reel this back, you know that. Just reels very slowly, please. Yeah. Keep going. Keep reeling. Yeah, no, that's fine. Just keep going. Keep going. Keep reeling. Yeah. Keep reeling. Right, get ready now. What I want you to do now is open the bow arm. Yeah, so you get a, so it don't drop, yeah? Yeah? Okay, now I'm gonna tip it. That's it, she's in. Um, hopefully, you know, it'll just get it absolutely perfect in position where they were feeding earlier and it should bring on a quick bite if they come back in. It's a lot of messing around and uh, there's a lot of work involved doing this, but if you know, you're getting it absolutely accurate and you're not going to be chucking like big leads right over here into the, into the zone where they're feeding. Just going to throw a little bit more bait around it. So I've got a little scoop in there. Just give it another little half a scoop. As, I'm putting the, as I was putting the pole out, there's about three carps, one past. So yeah, it's looking good. Got a good chance, I reckon. Job done. That's it. That's it. Solid, mate. That'd be a bit better, wouldn't it? See it. It's looking really good for the rod against the bush. Uh, the bait went down really nicely. Everything was perfect. And when I had a little walk around there, uh, there's a couple of fish milling around in the back of the bush. So I'm really confident with that. About 20 minutes ago, a fish boshed right inside the bush. So I reckon this evening when they come out, they're sitting in there. When they come out, there's a good chance. Uh, so I've decided to do the night in, it, in here. It's the last night I've got. So this morning, when I walked up here, there was quite a few fish showing out to my right, uh, slightly at about two o'clock. And um, they were fizzing up and the odd one was, you know, boshing out. So what I'm gonna do now is have a cast around with my marker rod. I just got a lead and a bit of braid. See if I can find something nice out there to present two baits on and uh, hopefully get a couple of fish on it. That's gone down absolutely beautiful there. Got that, just what I was looking for. It's a nice knock on the rod tip, perfect. Okay, I'm just gonna show you the rig that I used this morning to catch the common. Uh, it's a rig that I've used quite a long time now. Uh, mainly use it when I'm fishing on wafters, although I have used it uh, fishing pop-ups, although I very rarely use pop-ups. Basically, because of the way I fish over bait, I normally fish on the bottom, on the deck. And it's a very simple rig, but very effective uh, for these wary fish on these pressured lakes that I fish. Now, it's a, basically a multi-rig. So it's just um, a basic multi-rig, which creates like a D um, off the side of the hook. So you can see that the hooky can run up and down really easy. I'll put a little micro swivel on it to give the bait movement. So it's got plenty of movement in there. So it's similar to a hair. And then all I do is I just put a little bit of shrink tube on 
the uh, hook on the sort of eye of the hook, sort of coming over sort of five mil at each end, just to get me a kick. So I get that nice kick, so I can get that angle um, on the rig. And then I also put a tiny little bit of putty just above the barb of the hook. And what this does is, is when the fish pick up the bait, it helps to turn the hook uh, more easily. I'm using a nice small hook link, about four or five inches long, again, for these riggy fish fishing over bait. And basically, this is it. And um, at the end, obviously, is my little barrel wafter, what I use. I use these everywhere for all the fishing that I'm doing. A lot of the time, I'm fishing over chop bait. So I just put a little barrel wafter on the hair, slide it over the um, ring on the first part of the swivel, and then I tie it off with a bait stop. As you can see, it's a very, very simple rig. It's easy to tie, very quick to tie, but it's very, very effective. So about three quarters of an hour ago, I was sitting on my bed chair, um, and all of a sudden I heard a single bleep. I looked down, the line was really tightened up on the left-hand rod. The rod tip bent right over, uh, run down, picked it up, started to move the fish, get it back towards me. Then it kited to me left and ended up getting in the bush. Um, after a little while, there was, the fish was erupting on the surface, I was trying to get it moving and uh, it come off, I lost it. I was absolutely devastated, threw the rod on the floor, sat down, made a cup of coffee and just started to wonder what I can do next. Not wanting to put another rod on that spot after losing a fish, I decided to go for another little walk and I had a walk round and a spot I baited earlier, there was one or two fish moving around, milling around that area. So now I'm going to up up on my tackle, drag it all down the other end again for the second time today and uh, hopefully get a fish tonight and, uh, and see what happens, see what happens for my last night. So I better start cracking on. So I'm glad I made the move in the end. So it looks like the fish are stacked up up here. There's a load of fish feeding, which looks like on someone else's bait a bit further along the lake. But sadly, they've still left their bivy there, so I couldn't move down to that area. But I've also seen a few fish milling around the areas where I've been baiting up right in close. So it's looking like both rods are going right in the edge. Fish absolutely stacked up along here. Look at that. Can you see that? seen some fish just down here, right in the edge, literally like 10 foot from the bank. We've had them feeding, keep coming back, putting bait in, they're coming in feeding, there's some big fish here. So I'm just gonna use the pole, take it over the spot and just drop it in using the pole.
So it was a really quiet night last night. Uh, I had a couple of liners just after dark and was expecting a take, but nothing happened. Uh, woke up two or three times in the night, didn't near much up this end. So I expect that the fish moved. Uh, they've probably gone up the other end again. Uh, it just seems like we've been like one step behind all the time over the last day or so. So maybe, um, you know, the pressure's been moving them off or the time of the day. So this morning I've got uh, two different options. I can either stay here and wait for them to sort of come back when the sun gets high again, but we've only got until about 11 or 12 o'clock. So that's, you know, that's might not be the best option or I'm going to reel in in a minute, go and have a walk around and see if there's one more stalking opportunity before we leave. sitting here getting liners on this left hand rod, uh, right hand rod, and then bang, just absolutely ripped. Big scaly mirror in the net. Just loving this one. It's an absolute banger of a fish. That is such a nice fish. I reckon that's got to be one of the best ones in here. That's easy upper 30, 38 plus I reckon. So we've got the fish in the net. I had a good scrap. It was uh, trying to take me into all the snags either side of me. It was a real powerful fish. And when I see it in the water, I knew it was a good one. It looks about 38 pound. It's got scales all over it, so we've, we couldn't have caught a nicer fish really for the film. At the same time, we was getting quite a few liners just before it happened. So I've redone both rods, put them both in there, put a scoop of bait around each rod. I'm only fishing literally two rod lengths out either side of me. So I'm gonna bite the line now. We're gonna get him out of the water. We're gonna weigh him. Then we're gonna put him in a retainer just for 10 minutes, just so we get the camera gear ready and we tidy up the swim a little bit because uh, it's a bit manic, been a bit manic the last sort of five minutes. Um, we're going to put him in the next swim along in the retainer because we don't really want to be laying him down here because we're fishing in so close and we've still got another hour left so we've got a chance of another fish I believe. Um, then we'll get him out and take some nice photos and hopefully you guys can see what a beautiful carp he is. Oh my god he's big. He's well big mate. I've walked down to the next swim to keep the fish out of my margins because I'm fishing the margins and I've made sure that I've retained him in a really shaded area with some nice deep water there where it's really cool. Since I started carp fishing I've always known you know you never ever put a sack fish or a retained fish in a sunny area so I always keep them in a really nice shaded area out of the sun uh, so they don't get stressed out.
can't think of a better way to end the session. Uh, one of the best carp in the lake in my opinion. It's an absolute stunner. Really beautiful carp. Caught him on the rig that I showed you guys earlier on a little barrel wafter. Literally a rod length from the bank down to the right under a little willow tree. A brilliant way of catching them. It's quite a hot morning so I'm going to get him back in the water now and I'm absolutely buzzing. <laughs>